Hi, I'm Dr. Pennywit, and welcome to another installment of At the Pennywit Center. You know, one of the things that we deal with quite frequently with individuals, as well as families, couples, just about anybody you can imagine, is the area of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness can be extremely difficult and sometimes nearly impossible unless the individual really wants to get out from under that weight of unforgiveness. But there are different kinds of unforgiveness. You can be unforgiving with a spouse, a mate, somebody from your past, but what about yourself? You know, we are the hardest on ourselves than we are on anybody else. We can forgive somebody who would viciously wrong us before we would forgive ourselves. And so because of that, forgiveness of self is vital to any kind of growth, rather it be spiritual growth, rather it be emotional growth, or growth within um, a relationship. It doesn't matter. Any kind of growth or moving forward takes forgiveness of yourself. Because let's face it, we all make mistakes. If we were to all write an honest book about ourselves, <laughs> I tell you that would be some really spicy reading for some of us. And yet, if we learn to forgive ourselves and forgive our past, we could move forward. And it's very important to forgive. It's extremely important to forgive those that have wronged you as well as yourself. So much so that I had a, I had a dream one night. It was a very vivid dream and I knew it was from the Lord. Maybe some of you have such dreams. And this dream, it was in like a desert. It was probably Arizona because there were some mesas behind the scene. And it was a, a long stretch of desert, and the sand was there, and the, the, uh, the different desert plants, the cactuses were there, and the, the different things. And I saw myself streaking across the desert in front of this mesa. And I was running very, very fast. Now, I was watching myself do this. So this dream is from a dual perspective. I knew what I was doing because it was me doing it. And I was watching myself do that very thing that I was doing. So I was sitting on the sideline watching myself run. And I knew what I was thinking because as I said, it was me thinking it. So I'm streaking across the desert as fast as I can. The only way I can really describe it is the Roadrunner cartoon with the Roadrunner and Wiley Coyote and the coyote's chasing after the roadrunner, and the roadrunner's moving so fast that his little legs look like two little airplane propellers spinning very vigorously. Well, that's what I looked like. And I'm streaming across the desert, and the sand is flying up behind me, and I mean, I am moving just like the roadrunner. And all of a sudden, I stopped. I put on my brakes, and I stopped, and I crumbled to the ground, and I started crying. Now, I know why I stopped, because again, it was me doing it, and I was watching myself. I had sinned or fallen short in some way from following after God. I knew that I had sinned against God, and it upset me very much, because I knew I did something that I shouldn't have done. And I don't really even know what it was, but I did it anyway. And there was Jesus, and I couldn't see Jesus, but I could hear him. I could, I could see an outline of him, and I could hear him. And he said to me, son, get up, keep running, keep running. And I knew at that point that I was running the race of life. I began, I began to understand that. And he said, get up, run, son, get up and run. And I said, but Lord, I've sinned, and I meant to do it. And he said, well, I know that's what you think, but do you mean it now? And I remember clinging to his feet and I was saying, no, Lord, no, I didn't mean it. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. And he said, I forgive you. That's called repentance. You're already forgiven. So get up and run, run. And I went, but Lord. And he said to me, and he got very stern with me. He's never gotten angry with me, but he got stern. And he leaned over and he said, don't ever minimize the power of my blood. And then he went on to say, you see, child, I was at your sin before you ever committed it, and I've already forgiven you. I am, he said, meaning I am the great I am. And I remember with the tears streaming down my face, 
sitting on the, in the sand looking up at him, and I said, what? And he said, don't be concerned about that. I'll explain that later. Just get up and run. Get up and run real fast. Go, go. And so I got up very fast. I understood what he was saying, and I began running again. And before I knew it, I was streaking across the desert as fast as I can, and the dust was flying up in the air, and my legs were spinning like two little airplane propellers, and I was running the race of life, and I was winning. And then all of a sudden, I started to slow down again, although I didn't stop like I did before. But there was Jesus on the sidelines, almost like a cheerleader saying, Go, run, just repent, just repent, son, just repent, keep running. And I would yell out behind me, Sorry, Lord, forgive me, as I'm running along. And he'd say, I forgive you, run, faster, faster, faster. And before I knew it, I was running across the desert, and without even stopping, I'd say, Sorry, Lord, forgive me, as I'm running as fast as I can. And he'd say, I forgive you. Keep going. Run, run, run. And he helped me to understand that his forgiveness is deeper than anything you have ever done. It's deeper than any sin you could commit. I don't care what it is. You're already forgiven. Ask the Lord to forgive you. And then don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. But, but Lord, I'm going to have to punish myself for a couple of weeks because I did this or that. No. If it's in your heart and you repent willingly with a, with a whole heart, you can get up and run that race of life and don't be concerned about it because you've already been forgiven. You see, Jesus allowed himself to be beat up and bruised so that we wouldn't have to punish ourselves. He took that punishment. And so, what is it that's holding you back? What have you done that you're allowing to hold you back? PennyWittCenter.com, Pennywit Ministries, um, Fort Worth Christian Counseling.com, Dallas Christian Counseling.com. Give us a call. Let us help you find that chain that's holding you down. Together, we can break that chain and send you on that race of life. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.